Hey there, everybody. Over the next few weeks, we are going to be getting ready for Christmas. Next week is the first Sunday of Advent, November 28th. Pretty crazy. Does anybody know what the word Advent means? It's actually from a Latin word, it means coming, and they take that Latin word from an old Greek word, parousia, which means coming. This is remembrance and celebration of Jesus coming to earth, which is why we celebrate Christmas, Jesus's birthday. And it's also remembering and looking forward to Jesus returning. So I don't know if anyone has an advent calendar at home, kind of like the one behind me here, where you open up little things and there might be little prizes or candies or chocolates. We like the ones that have little Legos. Uh, but we don't have any parousia calendars. Would you rather have one of those? Advent is a pretty fun time and it's anticipation, it's building, it's waiting, and there's an excitement that comes with it. How do you use your advent calendar at home? if you have one. Maybe it's just a Christmas countdown uh, thing that you have hanging on your wall of counting down to December 25th. Well, Advent is just a fancy word that describes the days leading up to Christmas. Advent starts four Sundays before Christmas usually. It's the very special time each year when we get ready for Jesus's birthday because Christmas is his birthday. So what we want to do is to encourage you to work on a plan for this Christmas season, this Advent season, as we prepare to celebrate. And this plan will be all about the love we have for Jesus and the love he has for us. So as people, we can reflect the love and light of Jesus in everything that we do. We want to treat people the way Jesus did. We hopefully want to love people the way Jesus did, and we can serve people the way that Jesus did. Christmas is the perfect time of year for us to find those rhythms of love. Uh, we can celebrate Jesus' birthday by living in the ways Jesus showed us. So to get ready for Jesus' birthday, we're going to look to adopt four things in our life that will help us with that. So the first plan is to worship fully. See, Christmas is all about Jesus and we'll worship him with our hearts, minds, and actions. I have a question for you to chat about or to think about. What do you think it means to worship Jesus? Well, pause the video and share your thoughts with the people you're watching with. Call or text a friend and ask them, or ponder this question for yourself and even write some of your thoughts down. Well, here are some of the things I've heard when I've asked others this question. They say things like, we pray to Jesus out loud or in our hearts. Uh, we believe that Jesus is the Son of God. We sing worship songs. We say thank you for all of our blessings. We obey and listen well to Jesus. We read the Bible. We can play music in honor of Jesus. We treat people with kindness like Jesus would. These are all great ideas. To worship means to give worth or value to something. So as people who love and want to follow Jesus, we can praise Jesus, which means we celebrate Jesus' goodness in all that he is and does. We can give thanks to Jesus. We lift up our hearts to thank Jesus for everything we've that, that we've been given and blessed with. We listen to Jesus, so we follow the words and teachings of Jesus in the Bible. These are all ways to worship. We rejoice. We're filled with joy when we think about how much Jesus loves us. We pray, so we ask Jesus for help to be our best every day and we listen for the things that he wants to say to us. Yes, we can sing, we sing songs to express our love for Jesus and we share, we share the love of Jesus with our friends and family and there's so many ways to do this. These are all good ways to worship Jesus and when we worship fully, we focus on Jesus with our hearts, minds and actions. We should all remember that Jesus is the reason we celebrate Christmas. It's his birthday. As a way to say thank you to God for sending Jesus to the world, we pray, sing, say prayers, we share, we give. What a great way to tell Jesus, happy birthday. In the Apostle Paul's writings to the Ephesians in chapter 5, it says, Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks for God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, what words stand out to you in those verses? 
Well, because I love music, I definitely noticed that word, music. But the word that strikes me even more than that is the word everything. I can show my love and thanks to God and worship to God in every single thing in my life. So I have another question for you to talk about. What is your favorite way to worship Jesus? Pause the video and share what your favorite way is to worship and then do those things together. So if it's sing a song, sing a song together. Maybe it's enjoying nature, so plan a walk later today or maybe just check out some awesome videos of nature on YouTube or Netflix. And maybe together you can have a race for this worship word search that we're doing in person. I'm gonna throw it up on the screen there, pause the video, see how many words you can find uh, that have to do with worship or who can find a word the fastest. Have fun with it and we'll catch up with you in a minute. So as we think to worship fully, I would just encourage you to speak out this simple prayer to Jesus. Jesus, I want to worship you fully every day. Help me to have a thankful heart and remember how much you love me. Amen. So the second encouragement for an awesome Advent season, awesome Christmas season, is to spend less. I want to encourage you to spend a little less on ourselves or yourself and use the money that you can save to help others this Christmas. Have you ever saved up money to buy something for yourself or someone else in your family? Uh, what did you do to save that money or to raise that money? Have you ever given money you saved away to someone else? Why did you feel that they needed it more than you? You have maybe heard that it's better to give than to receive, and there's definitely some truth to that. But even more importantly is for us to notice is how much we actually have that we don't even realize. We can learn something from this through a little story Jesus tells us in the book of Luke in the Bible. Here's the story, but you can also read it in Luke chapter 12, verses 13 to 21. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He healed many people from their sickness, performed many miracles like calming storms, and even raised people from the dead. One day, a crowd gathered around Jesus to hear him talk. The crowd was so big that people were stepping on each other. Hey, watch it! Jesus was talking to his disciples when someone called out from the crowd. Hey, Jesus! Teacher, tell my brother to divide with me the property our father left us. Ah, uh, hold on there. Jesus said, friend, who made me a judge over you to decide such things as that? Be careful and guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life is not measured by the many things he owns. Huh? Then he told them a story. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. He said to himself, what should I do? I don't have room for all my crops. Hmm. Ah, I got it. Then he said, I know. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll have room enough to store all my wheat and other goods. And I'll sit back and say to myself, my friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. <laughs> now take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. <laughs> but God said to him, you fool, you will die this very night. <laughs> Wait, what? Then, who will get everything you worked for? Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. Well, we definitely don't want to be wasteful like that guy. In the book of Matthew, chapter 6, it says, For where your treasure is, 
there your heart will be also. Jesus said this himself, these words. What Jesus means here is that the things we treasure and hold tightly to show everyone what we care about. So if someone is greedy, they're going to hold on to everything so tightly and not share it with others, even when other people may need that or it might be beneficial for them. But Jesus wants us to be different. He wants us to have grateful hearts. And when we're grateful and share our blessings with other people, we're living the ways of Jesus, the way God made us to live. So I have a question for you to discuss. What things can you and your family do to spend less and help others this Christmas? I know one year my kids chose to spend less and actually used all their Christmas money that they had been given to buy some farming supplies for a family in another country that needed them. That's pretty cool and I was really impressed by that. Pause the video and chat about what you could do. Maybe it's a money jar that you create to save up and you collect change in there that can be given to someone or to use that money to buy something that someone else needs. Or maybe taking something off your own Christmas list so that it can be bought and given to a toy drive. Pause the video now and chat about some ideas that you could do. So as we think about spending less, this Christmas season, I want to encourage you to maybe say this simple prayer. Dear Jesus, I am so grateful for all your gifts to me. Help me to have a heart of gratitude this Christmas. So I have another question for you to discuss. What does the word present mean? Pause the video and share your thoughts on this word, present, with the people you're watching with. Call or text a friend and ask them, or ponder this question for yourself, and write some of your thoughts down. So the third challenge for this Christmas Advent season is to give more. Now you might be saying, well that kind of is not the same as what we talked about before. We're supposed to spend less, so how do we give more? Well, you talked about the word present, but what does it mean to be present? Because in giving more, we're talking about giving more of ourselves this Christmas and spending our time with the people Jesus loves. So you probably got a pretty good idea of what a present is, but do we know what it means to be present? Being present means being there for someone else, sharing, listening, and spending time with them. When you go to work or school, you are present. In fact, they sometimes take attendance at school, right? And you say, here, present. You are there with other people. The Bible tells us that Jesus wants to be our forever friend and he is with us always. When we're sad, when we're scared, when we're happy, when we're excited, Jesus is always there. Jesus is present. Can you say that? Jesus is present. In John 3.16, it says, God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in Jesus won't die, but have life. This is what it means to give to others. Give the life of Jesus. Give yourself. Give your time face to face. God gave Jesus as a present to be present. He has given us gifts. He has given us presents for us to be present, to be with other people. Sometimes our families don't even sit together and have a meal. We're running around so busy, we're not having conversation or time spent together. Maybe this Christmas, we will focus more specifically on spending time as a family. We'll spend more time spending a specific time visiting some other relatives or friends, or maybe we'll even visit a stranger. We'll let them know that they're loved and they're cared for. There's so many ways that we can use our lives to be present to actually be known and to get to know other people. So here are some questions that you can ask of the people you're watching this video with to get to know each other better. And better yet, ask some of these questions to some people outside of your house, maybe a neighbor, a teacher, or a coworker. Give the gift of yourself. 
And guess what? Because Jesus is with us, when we give ourselves, Jesus is there too. So we're giving some of Jesus to one another. Look at these questions and take some time to ask each other them. Pause the video, write them down, share your answers with each other, spend time together. So I encourage you to give more of yourself, give more of your time. And I encourage you with this simple prayer, if you would be so bold as to say this to Jesus. Dear Jesus, help me to remember that you are a gift from heaven. Thank you for loving me. Help my life to be a gift for others. Finally, we can be challenged to love all. As a friend of mine once used to say, what does all mean? All means all. There's nothing left out of that. Jesus came for all people, including us. We'll love and serve all people as a reminder of how much God loves us. What do you think it means to love your neighbor as yourself? That's what Jesus told us to do. Pause the video and talk about this question with the people you're watching with. Call or text a friend and ask them or ponder this question for yourself. Well, when I have asked people this question of what does it mean to love your neighbor, some things I've heard are to treat people the way you would want to be treated to share your toys with other people, to invite someone new to sit with you so they aren't alone, to help someone when they need it, to donate money to people who don't have clean water or food, or you make someone feel special, or to pray for people around the world. Maybe some of those answers matched what you thought and said, or maybe you had a different idea altogether. That is great. So let's put this all together. How can worshiping fully help us to love all? Well, we can pray for others. We can thank God for others and we can say thanks to other people. We can see other people the way Jesus does. We can treat them the way Jesus does. How can spending less help us to love all? Well, we can give money that we don't spend to people who need it. We can donate toys or clothes. How can giving more help us to love all people. Well, we can invite someone to church. We can invite someone to our house. We can volunteer some of our time, spend some time with other people who need that human interaction. All these things we've chatted about today can allow us to love all, but only if we are obedient and choose to live that way, choose to use our lives in those ways. Hey, Grandpa. Do you want to help me with my collection job? I'd love to help you. What are we collecting? Money. We made these jars at church a few weeks ago, and I want to fill mine all the way before next Sunday. What's happening next Sunday? Our family decided to do a special plan for the month of December to get ready for Christmas. Tell me about this special plan you're doing. At church, we talked about worshiping Jesus fully with our whole hearts, spending less money on gifts for ourselves, giving more of our time to friends and family, and next week we're celebrating the last step, love all. That sounds really neat. I want to hear more about this. Who are you collecting money for? We decided to save up the money for this family we know that doesn't have a lot. We want them to have a special Christmas this year. Well, come on in. I have lots of stuff I can give away. That sounds like a great thing to do at Christmas time. That makes me think of what Jesus said in Matthew 25. Really? What did Jesus say? Here, I'll look it up in the Bible and we can read it together. Or better yet, I'll have my friend Sharkman read it. Shockman, read the scripture. <coughs> this is from the book of Matthew, chapter 25. Jesus said, For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. 
I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Do you know what the Bible is saying here, Lloyd? I think the lesson is that the way we treat other people matters to God. Since Jesus created every person like him, that means when we treat people poorly or ignore them, it's like we're ignoring Jesus. And when we love others and treat them with respect, it's like we're showing love to Jesus. It's like when the Bible says to love your neighbor as yourself. That's a wonderful explanation, Lloyd. I'm so proud of you. The special plan you're doing with your family is something that would make Jesus proud. Really? Absolutely! Just like in the story Jesus told, you and your church are noticing people in need and you are helping them. With the collection jar, you're collecting money for people who don't have much. You're making a big difference in their lives. Wow, Grandpa. I never thought about it that way. I just thought it was a nice thing to do. But now I realize by loving and serving other people, I'm showing my love to Jesus too. That makes me feel really happy. And this is a great time of year to do that. We celebrate Jesus' birthday on Christmas. The way you're helping others is the best present you could give Jesus. You are loving people the way that Jesus loves them. Thanks, Grandpa. That makes me even more excited to fill up the collection jar. How can I help you with your collection? I made these cards and I want to give them out to some friends and neighbors. It says that I'm collecting money for people in need and I need their help. That's a great idea. I bet there are a lot of people who would want to help you with that. Thanks, Grandpa. Let's get started. Huzzah! Here's an idea you can work on today to love all. Since Christmas is coming up, take some time to make some Christmas cards, homemade or even just some store-bought ones. It doesn't matter. But create some special Christmas cards for people you may normally not give cards to, like teachers, postal workers, police officers, healthcare workers, the waste collection person for your street. You know, people who serve you or your family. Write them an encouraging note or draw a picture. Thank them for all the ways they help your family and community and wish them a Merry Christmas. In Matthew chapter 22, Jesus says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. All people are loved by God. We can love all people. We can ask God for that strength to love all people. Our lives can show that all people are loved by God and that every person knows God thinks they are amazing and that Jesus is present for them, to them and with them. I want to encourage you to say this simple prayer, if you'd be so bold. Jesus, you love all the people in the world, including me. Help me to love others just like you would. I want to serve and love people in my neighborhood and around the world. Amen. I hope these ideas of worshiping fully, spending less, giving more, and loving all will help you celebrate Advent and Christmas time in some new ways, some ways that inspire you and inspire others, some ways that make Jesus smile. You are a light in this world that can be pretty dark at times. 
So let your light shine. Remember that light that you have comes from Jesus. So just let him shine. The world will be better because of Jesus. It should be better because of Jesus, because of God with us. And he has chosen to show up through our lives, through our words and actions. That's pretty cool, huh? I look forward to seeing you next week as we begin our Advent celebrations together. Peace.